Alright, this is something very important I want to talk about in this video. I know people have seen my other videos, they've been off the wall and crazy. And to tell you the truth, I'm really not me anymore. As most of you probably know, seeing the videos, I have had a mental decline. And people may think that um, I shouldn't let one person do this to me. But it was something that was just beyond my control. And what happened, this is what happens when you have a mental decline and a breakdown. It's like you're on such a high. And when you get knocked down off of that in such, such a sudden fashion, the shift is overwhelming for somebody who has PTSD, such as I do. So when Brittany did that to me, it shot me down all the way to the bottom. And these plans now I cannot do. And to have to live with the realization that I'm not going to have the life that I wanted. And I felt I deserved in the life I was going to make. And all this happened at this in a flash, in a sudden moment, was gone. All these things combined, and then you got people telling you that you're a freak and you're only good enough to be used and discarded. And then when it happens, it's almost like a prophecy being fulfilled. And Brittany did that. And it's like the words, I'm trying to communicate as best I can. But when someone does these things to you, you get told one thing and then it happens. That can also further mess you up. And it does change you in a way when you have when these things happen. I've had several breakdowns, but this one actually it killed a part of me that I'm not gonna get back again. This may be hard for people to understand. But people do things for all sorts of reasons. Like when people want to exit their pain. It's not always about being selfish. For some, it's actually, in their minds, a means to an end. While others may not see it, for the individual going through it, it is a means to an end. It's not always dramatic or romantic or whatever. It's, sometimes it's just something people see as the only way. And I keep hearing all the old cliches that, oh, it's going to get better, there's going to be brighter days, but I don't see that. And the ones who are talking to me are not the ones I need to hear from. And that's another thing. When you're left hanging with nothing, and some people can actually kill you faster and hurt you more. They can destroy you faster by not saying anything at all. And but sometimes you need, you know it's important to get some kind of closure and things, be able to say what you need to say, and to have the other person talk to you. Angry words can get said. When you when things get heated, but there's never a chance to 
at least apologize or try to make it right. It weighs very heavily on somebody, especially someone like me who has what, what, the PTSD and all this, and it just all combined, all, all combined everything. It's like overloading a circuit, and eventually it blows. If you overload it with too much stress. I've been physically suffering for quite some time. And now I got the mental suffering and everything else on top of it. And I will not recover from this. And other people may say, oh yeah, I sure you will. You'll recover. You'll make it. You're strong enough. But to someone who this has happened to, we don't see that. Even though you do. This is, this I'm trying to communicate is that people have different understandings of things and different ways of perceiving pain and, and whatever. And for me, it's like I, I feel stabbing. This way I can describe it every day. I get stabbed over and over and over until I numb it with alcohol, whatever else I can get my hands on. If someone who's gone through this, this is what we're thinking, self-medicating, and people say, oh, that's not the right way to go, but for us it is. And for those who aren't going through it, it's easy for them to say, you're going to make it. And then, like I said, the tired old cliches, that they, 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 they're trying to be helpful and they mean well. That's not always enough. Especially when you need to hear from the other person who did this to you. person who shattered you and I gave six years and I feel like I just didn't get anything for it. There was a lot of grief. There were some good times. But I don't want to get too far off the track here. It's very important to everybody watching it they need to understand how someone like me is. I got to this place. I wish I hadn't. I wish I wasn't here. I want to claw and scratch out of my own body just to get get away from the pain. It's like I just want to run and run and run and run and run. So I can't run anymore. And I have no resolve. That's what weighs so heavily on a person like that. Like me. There's others who have been through all kinds of heartbreak. All kinds of different trials and tribulations. But each case is different. And we all do our own time in our own way. But I want everybody to understand, you know, we have feelings too. We do. And we're not always self-pitying. It's about a bigger thing than that. It's not that we want to hurt anybody. We just want our own hurting to stop. I think we have a right to do that. But some people, if you're someone who has lived a life of pain, you deserve to have a, a peaceful resolve in the end. Nobody should have to live in pain. There's not always things you can say that will... There are some people who are inconsolable. I am right now. Because I need to hear from one person. I just mean, you know, when you need a chance to fix things and you can't. My eyes are a little dry, sorry. 
but this is all what happens when, and it, it, this is what breaks people, is when you just had enough. And I don't think we should be judged for how we feel or how we express ourselves or how we want to end our pain. We shouldn't be judged for that. So that's, that's basically it. I hope this gives people a better understanding of what happens during the course of a breakdown and, and after. I'm sorry if I made this too drawn out, but thank you for watching.